Hello and welcome to Vintage Magazine Monday. We've got a fantastic issue for you this week. As you can tell by the cover, Rod and Custom, June 1957. We got a special on the Dream Truck, complete facts, figures, and photos. Some great cover shots. I'll let you check that out in the great triple purple color paint scheme on that one. It's an awesome looking truck. And we also have the Great Debate Custom Comparison, East versus West, and much more inside. So let's get into her. I'll add there, George Barris pinstripes. Of course, like the, the table of contents. I'll let you check that out. Be useful if you're kind of trying to recall an issue from the back catalog. You don't have to get all the way into the episode. You look at the table of contents. Starting line summed up the issue is the half ton pickup. Talking about the dream truck. A little recap there for you. I'm gonna pause and read. Put that for you. We got letters to the editors. Always fun to read. We got the California tilt. From the looks of things as they are revealed in the recent issues of auto magazines, the California tilt seems to be getting more popular on the coast. But few, if any, nose down cars have turned up here in the east. No reply there. Tubular axles. Some more advertisement on the side. Of course, we got the, the big two page JC Whitney. Neat stuff there. Second part of the two page. Just cool to see all the old school hot rod catalogs. Here we got the Auto Mart. Up here we got a new four carburetor manifold for the Chevrolet V8 from Wyan. Down here we got a police auto alarm. A little auto alarm for you from Gregory Sales. Up here we've got some lightweight adjustable Olds rocker arms from McGurk Engineering. And the road to better driving, a visualized text. Cambridge Book Company. Learn how to drive better. The Great Debate East versus West custom comparison. Wherever customizing enthusiasts congregate, someone inevitably brings up the discussion of Eastern customs and Western customs. The discussion, if representatives of both factions are present, generally winds up with what is termed a friendly argument, but which often goes much further. Now we are definitely not going to take sides on the issue, but rather we thought we'd bring to light what the discussions entail and what the hue and cry is all about. So check this out. You guys want to read the whole article. Again, give you a quick shot there. Pause and read, and we'll check out the photos here with you. Matching up these Mercury's, selecting east from west is not the simple task continent separated enthusiasts might expect. If you picked one on the left as being Pacific built, then you can really distinguish your cars. Both have lights Frenched, single grill bar, rounded hood corners. Down on the bottom. But with these Fords, there is a marked geographical difference. Eastern 49 at the left is higher from the ground for traveling those Atlantic coast roads. Has a little changed grill opening supplanted with the vertical concave grill bars. Western variety is much lower, has unique headlight treatment. I yeah, want the East versus West. Quick shot at the text. And down here, once again, difficulty will be experienced in choosing which car is from the east and which is from the west, except for licenses. Finn Ford displays neat appendages, carefully installed, and circular lenses set into French, but otherwise stocked openings. Ford at right from California shows much more unique treatment, the uncluttered appearance due to the guardless bumper. What the West thinks about the East, Eastern customer, custom cars have, but that 
You can go through that if you would like. And the East replies. Off on the East versus West Coast rods. Main customs. A pair of Chevys to be true, but with the customizing idea separated by more than 3,000 miles, Eastern variation at left has familiar Continental kit. Rollers to compensate for steep driveways, which would rather otherwise under damage undercarriage due to lowering and added overhang and peaks over taillights. California car is conservative of line with less switchbacks in design for cleaner look. Another set of Mercs. Custom sign in one locates its birthplace geographically. Other hills from the Midwest. Ideas and workmanship in this case are surprisingly similar. Rounded hood corners, special grill with park light ends, Buick side trim. However, California variation is more deeply lowered. Here is what the East thinks about the West. Western customer cars have blank, but blank. If I catch the text there, better. Anybody likes reading. The West goes the radical route in this instance, while Eastern Bird reveals much more, with much work with conservative result. Right Bird requires second glance before changes become apparent. Though taillight fins required some serious metal work, California version is now a sans bumper, has unique fins. And we'll do it for the east versus west. A little taste there. Faster than a falling body. When some of our fastest dragsters leave the starting lines, they accelerate faster than a falling body. Talk about disprove the ability to of a car to accelerate faster than one G. We got a whole kind of technical article on this. You guys want to try to read that all sorts of new age talk with these dragsters full on article clear example talking about a faster car doesn't always win against a quicker car Pete Milano and his frantic 50. We got a convertible 50 Ford. Lots of work going on there. Give you a quick look up there. Very sharp looking rig. I like the grill work. Here. Entrance is gained to the Frantic 50 by pressing switch carried in trousers pocket. Remote control, transistor amplifier with antenna concealed and padded top. Picks up signal and activates electric door latches. System is clever and foolproof. Car radio is hi-fi system with a tweeter and woofer behind a rear seat. Radio itself being concealed in trunk. Indirect lighting permits eerie glow of entire car interior. Windshield dash R56 Ford, requiring extensive work to fit into the 50. Note in left photo, neat work of door jam. Taillights right photo are inverted lenses from a 55 Lincoln. The bumper is a 56 Pontiac with French bolts. Nice work. What was that? Grill. I think it was a Ford pickup grill. Beauty your hauler, beautify your hauler with a 20 minute tarp. Talk about installing a tarp in just 20 minutes for a nice clean custom look. The wettest quarter mile. Got some drag boats on the water. Quite the contrast between those two units. Of it. Blown engine there. 
record holder vapor trail bose uh, mandela hull and is powered by a jimmy blown cad tops and quarter to date owner owner daryl jenkins has skimmed to speed of 79.67 miles per hour no easy chore since water and driving method slows boats to about half that of conventional drag cars Big Cadillac in record holding hull drives through V-Box. The seat used when a boat tows skiers or cruising for pleasure is yanked for quarter runs and a lightweight tractor seat substituted. Weight reduction for water drags is just as important to top times as it is in the more conventional land craft. Good looking shot on the nail head. There we are, the big featured, the rod and custom dream truck. What we started with and where we went with it. It took 2,500 reader offer suggestions, close to $10,000, the services of over 50 individuals and four long years. But the rod and custom rolling laboratory has been completed at long, long last. At least version 1.0 just a great looking truck wheels are standard 15 inch chevrolet with centers reversed or chrome plated center cover is accessory spinner which is retained within model a acorn nuts compare the custom unit to the standard wheel in the inset Text. Lots of cool pictures to check out. Go up here to the top one. The pickup was trailered to the Atlantic coast behind Rod and Customs 57 Cameo back to Indiana. It now awaits further work by Shelbyville's Bob Metz. Odd rear wheels facilitate loading. A little more clearance, I'm guessing. We've got famous striper jeffries applies his trade on the half ton by separating paint tones with fine white lines other designs were completed on tail and hood interior shot lower dash with tax speedometer ignition and light switches was built by valley customs shop upper panel by barris houses ammeter fuel water temperature and oil pressure gauges wearing runs through the side posts before and after of the bed tail end was relieved of folding gate stake posts and bumper then barris rebuilt rear by adding sheet metal panel rounding bed rails with curved exhaust tubing forming the rear grill opening of two stewed grill pans here front end construction was described in past issues looked as in Inset before Barris Customs built unique grill headlight arrangement. Colors are three tones of purple. Primary shade containing two gallons of pearlescent at $25 per quart. Park and turn lights are set into grill. Little corner shot here. Headlight system construction shown in February 57 issue. Utilizes all four lamps for both high and low beams. Scant five inches from ground. Roadability of hauler has not been very much impaired. Like taillights, park lights are made of plastic. On the end of the bars there. A little action shot. Coming through turn at 40 miles per hour. Pickup shows little heel over. Suspension up front is handled by air. Gives soft ride. Corners flat. Spin out occurred seconds after camera click without harm. Going away shot, going back through the same turn, rear end follows flat too, suspension remaining virtually stuck, springs hang from reworked supports, 3 inch lowering blocks, total rear drop is over 10 inches. Nice little profile shot there. 
Interior by Colgan Auto Upholstery in Burbank, California is not pleated or rolled. Instead features design blend of off-white Naga hide, purple frieze, the armrest, kick panels, and the center of the headliner are covered with a perforated metal for a unique effect. overhead hood scoop is functional leads both to engine and cab one above windshield for design only unique paint and treatment adds a, an apparent length to the hood scoop by seemingly to extend through the windshield each of the three colors are separated by the others by fine line striping three-way exhaust duplicated on other side evoked much questioning during car shows Two pipes exiting downward function all the time. Pipe extending upward leads from ahead of the muffler is unplugged for dragging. Top time this far is 92 miles per hour in the quarter, but further engine work since should better the time. 1955 Chevy was fitted with Offenhauser manifold, triple 97 carburetors. Moon Automotive was responsible for major assembly. Engine features overbore, port job, Large valves, milled heads, pinned rocker stands, pop-up pistons, Weber roller cam, aluminum flywheel, and is backed up by the transmission is a 41 Chevy. That covers all of those. Again, great features there. If you guys want to read the rest of the text. Love the, the Rod and Custom Dream Truck. Here we are moving on to Wichita on Vails. It's customized bid for fame with the Kansas Custom. Pretty sharp looking Chrysler there. Got a good look from the front end. Very good looking setup. Extended rear fenders house 55 Chrysler taillights installed upside down. Exhaust peeks through the bumper, which was moved aft. Installed within quarter section, the switch trips door solenoids for exit and entrance. Key is required to complete the contact. Upholstered in exterior harmonizing shades of blue and white. The interior is also striped by clever use of sewing machine. Length and front fenders extend beyond the simplified headlight units. The parking lights are 47 Ford, carefully fringed in place. Just a nice, clean looking rod. They used to call them Tin Lizzie's Flivers and things much worse, but this little T has been turned into a photogenic pickup. What a start as. Neat little pickup. Exhaust might be a little messy on the lines, but still a neat little unit. Quaint T of 25 vintage now boasts of nearly 10 times its original horsepower. Owner Lane has chosen to retain the light T frame, but has strengthened it by boxing in the side rails. Four years were required to rebuild the car. Pretty neat looking pick up. Want to improve the performance of your flathead? Don't just stand there, relieve it yourself. Do a little head work, port work. No torch and metal warping heat necessary when restyling with resin. Showing off some fiberglass. A little before of a Studebaker. Looks like we are adding some fins to her. Glassing it in. See, he's got some little fins for 57. Of the end of some articles, east versus west. Photogenic pickup. 
more letters, model cars. As long as your recent model car contest was such a success, why not have one each year? I'm sure the followers of this inexpensive little hobby would appreciate such efforts, and it would give an unequaled opportunity for various individuals to reveal their talents for automotive design and construction. So how about it? More? Joseph from St. Louis. We learned the hard way that contests wherein individuals are invited to send in samples of their work usually require a large staff of judges, letter writers, and so forth. Unfortunately, Rod and Custom is not so equipped. However, to keep model builders happy, we are in this issue unveiling the first of a series on the design and construction of pint-sized automobiles. In this manner, it is felt the hobby will grow and prosper in a fitting way. Tease forever. Couple of little ads for you. Dream truck continued. Here is a nice segment. Again, hopefully I can compile all of these into a single video just to see the evolution. Again, just one of my favorite pickups. Just a great looking pickup there. If you guys want to see any specific segment of the build. It's a wettest quarter mile. Still more letters. Faster than a falling body. A little bit more on the dream truck and who did what. Pause there. One car we've always been partial to is the Dearborn Bread 40 Coupe. We've liked it in its stock form and we've enjoyed many of the modified models that have graced the pages of Ryan Custom the last four years. Many of you readers have written with requests for restyling the 40, so here goes. You guys want to read the rest? Let me get a little shot off the sketch pad. Very nice looking 40 Ford. Looks like they are starting a cartoon contest. What to do, what to win. Here's our Rods and Customs in miniature for our model car friends. Give you a nice look at that. One of the finest models to be submitted for judging in the recent Rod and Custom Model Car Contest was this 56 Ford Half Tonner, built by 15-year-old Steve Knight of Mar Vista, California. From a Valkyrie, the tiny hauler narrowly missed the winner's circle. Unspectacularly in appearance by virtue of not having a flamed or otherwise gaudy paint job or radical customizing little truck was outstanding in its neatness of construction and detailed crafting of parts not supplied with the kit, but which were Steve's idea of what a truck should have. Aluminum bar stock was turned down into moon discs, and a GMC supercharger was fabricated from a block of plastic, then topped with a carburetor and an air cleaner. All details are carefully painted. A dull black was applied to the tires and all undercarriage parts. The engine block and pan are red with a chrome silver generator, fuel pump, and exhaust headers. The Jimmy blower manifold rocker covers are simulated gold anodized. The interior is white, and a piece of silk is stretched tightly across the truck's bed as a tarp. The grill is a simple thin bar, and the front end is further simplified by absence of massive bumper. Steve and other young men like him who have displayed their abilities at design and workmanship in our model contest are an encouraging sign that stylists and builders of the future will be most capable. The results of the recent model car contest disclose that we have the desire for regular column of various aspects of miniature car construction. If you have any data on model building that you feel interested in others, send it in. Again, that is a little 148th scale truck that he modified there's a back shot of the silk tonneau cover so he's got some exhaust work done there really well done homemade moon disc yeah if you guys like to have a little fun how well do you read rod and custom a little test of memory if you guys want to i can flip back and forth here real quick there's your instructions pause and read and then all will there's number one, 
pause, study, and now to the object of the memory. There is number one, pause. Now back to two. There's the, oh, here's two, they switched corners on me. Memory results. Number three, memory from reading. There's your paragraph to read. And a reading test. Number four, memory of photographs. Section of four hot rods for you to study. Try to get them as well as I can. And memory for the photographs. Now here four more roadsters. One of them appeared in the preceding page. Which one was it? Reader's car of the month. From total wreck to immaculate custom has been a prevalent course of action for the car builder with a modest budget. Large ideas, especially if he is a body man by trade. Such is the case with Douglas Bachman of Missoula, Montana, who purchased a 51 Ford from the local junkyard and proceeded to render twisted metal to shape of his desire. He did a very nice job on the 51 Ford. Out of the 48... District of Columbia brings us a convertible 50 Chevy. Hard to see the two-tone in that shot. There it is in the front. Nice grill treatment, trim treatment. And out of Colorado, we have a 33-34. Good look. Definitely one of my favorites. I like that. And a chisel plow front end on those. We're on a small block Chevy. Actually, and both of them are both 55 Chevy V8s. More in the cartoon contest. Model car contestants notes. Again, reminding you to send in. If you have not gotten your kit back, odds and ends. Had some interesting. Uh, reads for the readers don't know how many of you out there actually read these segments how many events back pressure and always a good article to catch And with that, that'll wrap it up. Fantastic episode. Love seeing the dream truck and everything going into it. We made it to the end. Thanks as always, and we'll see you next time.